Thierry, please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Start the budget review with cemeteries. How far back, John? It's on page 16. I'll be right back. Hi, Maureen. Hi. Do I just start talking? Would you like to? Well, okay. we look for it on our. <laughs> we get our budget packets for the first time tonight, so we've we had them to... about a minute. We just did it this morning, so. Okay. Why don't you start them, Maureen? Okay. Uh, as many of you know, the there hadn't been a real survey of the cemeteries in this town since Joanne Wasson did such a fantastic job back in the 1980s. So one of the things the cemetery trustees did this summer was try to find all the cemeteries, assess their condition, and, and evaluate what had to be done. And so we are asking for some increases, starting with the first line on the cemetery superintendent. Mark apparently hasn't had a raise in almost t the 20 years he's been doing this. Okay. And now that we are aware of the poor condition of a lot of the cemeteries, including town-owned cemeteries, that we're just not even taking care of at this point, we thought after 20 years we'd like to give him a raise of $75 a quarter. So that's why the, uh, the line for the superintendent is $1,900. Okay. Uh, for tree care, there are multiple trees in the current cemeteries that we are working on now and going to get done before the end of the year. But tree care is getting more expensive, and there are always trees that need to be taken care of. The right. major increase is in the maintenance line. Okay. And that's $19,199, just because we like things coming out with neat numbers, and we need to keep a dollar later on. Uh, when Joanne did the assessment, there were approximately 109 cemeteries. It's hard to say the exact number because some are double cemeteries, you know, like there's Putnam A and B or something. And we have since come across three other cemeteries. We, there is a list of town-owned cemeteries that we're already maintaining. There are two other town-owned cemeteries that we have, that we now know about, that have not been maintained. And there are some cemeteries we traditionally have been maintaining because of their historic values that are not town-owned cemeteries. Beyond that, there is an issue, um, 289, point whatever are the RSAs for cemeteries trustees and there are what are referred to as abandoned cemeteries and once a cemetery has not been maintained for 20 years now we're looking into that but some cemeteries when Joanne assessed them were in poor shape they were in even worse shape now so I think there's a case to be made that they've been abandoned we're not asking that we start taking care of these all, but we are saying between the maintenance that we're doing now and some maintenance that we're going to have to do to just keep some cemeteries protected at all, that's where the increase in that comes from. Looking back to 2009, the biggest maintenance budget we've had is a little more than $18,000. So. This is essentially, while it is bigger than the maintenance budget, by maintenance amount budgeted for 2016, it's $1,000 higher than what has been 
uh, budgeted for maintenance. And maintenance isn't just lawn care, I mean, which is what originally was here. Maintenance involves maintaining the walls, maintaining the gates, maintaining the fences. There are a lot of cemeteries that are right on the edge, and we've let things like fences decline. And so what we're, tr we're trying to do two things. We're trying to establish a group of friends of the cemetery, sort of similar to friends of the library, and we've had tons of people volunteer and say, I'd be willing to take care of this cemetery or this cemetery. But we can't just sort of turn it over to people. So what we're trying to do is decide on what are the historic cemeteries, what are the abandoned cemeteries, and get the current cemeteries we're taking care of both the town owned and the ones that are historic but are not town owned and get those all in good shape. Some of this is going to be a one-time thing but some of it may be ongoing. Uh, dues and subscriptions, <clears throat> right now there are three trustees, it's twenty dollars a year to belong to the New Hampshire Cemetery Association but we have been notified that it's going to go up, but we don't know whether it's going to go up $5, $10. So that's why that's an increase to $100. The other thing that's gone up quite a bit is supplies. That's because we really haven't been doing anything. Right. Um, one of the things I think it's critical that we do is we have done the surveys of all the cemeteries that we can find, and there are still six we're missing but we're continuing to look. But we've GPSed them, their location, we've photographed them, we've made an assessment of what the problems are with them. And in order to get that material together, what we would like to do is take the work Joanne did, whether it was 83 or 87 or whatever, look at, she has a list of like a cemetery that she re divides up by A, B, and C. So she has like cemetery A, We've now looked at it, what was the condition, found its GPS location, taken pictures, and what we're trying to do now is see if some additional people have been buried there. Because we know of some cemeteries, for instance, the Granite Cemetery in South Road, that have had additional burials. There, the uh, cemetery up on Whittier Road, we know that, for instance, Wadi and Jeanette were buried there. And what Wad Jr. the third said, they couldn't find out who owned it, they couldn't find any information. So we want to take Joanne's information, add to it, and make at least three copies of a booklet. One to keep in the cemetery folder, one for the library, so that the information is available to everybody, and then one to keep with the working <coughs> files for the cemetery trustees. We also have digital copies. We've got huge spreadsheets of, you know, this is the cemetery, this is what it looks like, these are the pictures of it, these are the people who have volunteered to sort of adopt that cemetery. But we need to have up-to-date records of where we are so far. And the estimates we've had to make those booklets are about $200 each. But beyond that, for instance, there's an herbicide budget that doesn't come under maintenance. There's D2. People have offered to adopt cemeteries. And the only really safe way to clean um, gravestones is with something called D2. Um, because otherwise, a lot of them, instead of clearing the algae off, just obscure what's written on the gravestone. Mm. So. We're, we would like to increase the supplies budget from $200 to $1,000. Meetings and training, the same thing. Uh, those meetings, when they hold them, there was a wonderful training session that the Historical Society arranged that the people came down to the uh, Ladd Cemetery and showed us how to stand uh, gravestones up that had fallen over showed us how to clean gravestones, what are the safest and best ways to do it. But because they came out, they didn't charge us, 
but the historical society made them a donation. Right. And if we're going to have a friends of the cemetery and we're going to have people adopt cemeteries, they do need training. And so we increased that budget by $100. And there's still a dollar for grants, just in case we ever get around to being able to write grants to get help with this. Thank you for a very thorough report. Anybody on the board with questions? Fred? Yeah, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, we're showing uh, $5,000 in the budget for tree care, and we haven't spent anything on that. No. Is that right, John? We are, work, there are, and Don can speak to this as well. There are tree problems in Parade. There are tree problems in Old Center. We have asked Mark Young to go around and assess which ones should be taken down immediately, which ones we can wait. And we're pretty sure that entire $5,001 is going to be spent this year. Okay, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, oh, no, we've worked with Mark. He's... Okay. And... Uh... And the same thing for the... Uh, the um, Supplies. Contracting, that's going to be used up. Right. We may even be short. Uh, and is there any <coughs> of the uh, that cleaning material you was, you were speaking of, is there any, any chance you can end up buying that under this year's budget? And uh, I'm sorry, Fred, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, on the uh, D2. On the D2 material that you spoke of, um, is there any chance you could end up buying that under this year's budget? Uh, we're showing $200, $200 for, uh, for supplies that have unexpended. Uh, one of the things we want to do this year with the supplies for that $200, and it won't probably take all of it, but we want to make get the initial book together, literally rip apart one of Joanne's old books, add pages, add the people that we can find that have been buried. So we were hoping to use that $200 to get okay. one done this year so then we can edit it, fix it, and right. do the final ones Great. Okay. next year. Thank you. All set, Fred, or no? One more. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have an estimate on uh, uh, per, by each of the cemeteries as to what the uh, ex expected cost would end <coughs> up being uh, for maintenance for next year? Or is the, the the number you have here is just an approximate number and see how far that will go? What the number, as you can see, the number that was budgeted, we're close to having spent that. And there is still some final stuff that has to be done. But what this does not include are the two, it turns out, that we know of town-owned cemeteries that have not been maintained and it is our job to maintain them. Right, but do you have an, <clears throat> do you have an estimate as to uh, what specifically needs to be done and approximate cost of, of, uh, of getting that uh, work done? For, for the, no, we just found out Friday okay. that we were coming up tonight, and so we met this morning to create the budget, but we do not have, like, it's really hard to know, right. you know, how much leaves, how much grass, there are wall problems in a couple of places. There are rail problems. We do not yet have estimates okay. for what those will cost, but we're going to get them as quickly as we can. Good. Okay. That was one of the, the points I was, uh, wanted to bring up, that uh, if you could end up having that information, certainly when the Budget Committee comes along, I'm sure they're going to be asking for something. We are pretty aware of what like. we need for the Budget Committee. <laughs> okay. That's where I was headed with that. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Andy. Yeah, uh, sort of to follow up on the heels of Fred, my concern is that you maybe don't have enough uh, extra Mine funding too, in here, um, particularly with regard to tree problems. I, I know one of the ones that we'd worked on was the uh, cemetery, the oldest cemetery in town down by the fairgrounds at the junction mm -hmm. of 43 and 107, which still has a couple of massive bull pine yeah. trunks in it, and uh, one incident there could wipe out a third of our historic stones. I think this board has been supportive of increased spending. As you're well aware, we met with the trustee of the trust funds to talk about uh, some of the mm -hmm. the ongoing financial problems regarding the trust funds. So uh, if the, the cemetery commission uh, thinks there needs to be more money than what you've proposed, I, I would certainly look towards. Andy, we could spend enormous amounts <laughs> of money on cemeteries. I mean. We're hoping to use, we're, we're having Mark assess the main cemetery, like 
the parade old center. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one on um, what's it, fellow Sanborn that looks like it's a problem and might destroy the wall. And that's interesting because the town doesn't own that cemetery, but the town owns the wall. So we're hoping that the $5,000 will cover the obvious things with those town-owned cemeteries. And then we can move on to the things on the town-owned cemeteries we're not maintaining, but that also have tree problems. But we thought at this point we need, we're relying on Mark Young to say, yeah, do this immediately, do this immediately. Maybe you can wait a while on this. But it is absolutely true. The saddest thing that we have found is like, for instance, the Robinson Cemetery, which it has clearly been abandoned. It has nine Civil War veterans in it. And you can barely walk through it. There are so many dead trees. Mm. Uh, and in a sense, by law, if it's abandoned, the town should take it over. But we also realistically know we can't do that everything this year. But that is the one cemetery I think we would like to, the first money we get, do something. But I bet we could spend $20,000 just clearing the trees in that cemetery, which have fallen over on, on gravestones. And, Thank you. and I would like to say one thing. Without Joanne Wasson, we never would have been able to do, find what we did this summer. But I would also like to say the people in this town have been amazing in terms of letting us on their property. Like Andy took us for this 45 minute trip through the woods and the swamps to find one cemetery. Uh, we didn't tell the property owner. Yes. <laughs> I mean, Tom Dillon took us into the Woodman Forest. We never would have found some of those cemeteries. Uh, Frank Mitchell, uh, Waddy Winslow, I mean, people just volunteered and said, I think I know where it is, and took tons of their time to help us, you know, update Joanne's work. So I just did want to make that clear. Thank you. Jeff, did you have anything? No, I'm good. Thank you so much, Maureen. Thank you. Keep us posted if you want to see. Sorry, I kept it, but I just think great, cemeteries are great critical. Effort. And I want you to understand why. We all set with this one for now? Yeah, I don't have any questions. I'm all set. Concern. Okay. Ambulance. Page 20. Page 20. I don't have any page numbers on Oh, yes, oh. I do. Upper right hand corner. There we go. Clip perfectly over it. Up 500 from last year. That's, is that contractual? Yeah, it says contracted okay. service. Are we in a mid-year, mid-term deal? I think we've, we've signed it for this year. We have a, we have a long-term agreement with them. Right. And it's clearly I, just a contractual I, agreement. I think it does. <laughs> All right. Debt services. 51 at the back. 61. I don't think we have any debt service, do we? There isn't. It's a buck. Yes. Okay. That didn't take long. <laughs> Memorial Day. <laughs> 44. Was 600 and it's proposed for 600 again. Any questions on that, Jeff? No. Fred? We're not showing any expenditure on it. Did we have a head in? Not yet. Hmm. Okay. I say Memorial Day is over. So. <laughs> Typically, we've had a charge for uh, flags, I believe, under that line. That's what it says flags for. In some years, though, I know people have, uh, organizations have donated flags, as mm -hmm. I recall, too, and we haven't expended the money. 
All right. She may have been this year. Supervisors of the checklist. So Katie is here. Um, we're going to reschedule that for another day. Okay. The only thing I can tell you is that we'll be up about $1,500, but I haven't had a chance to meet with my other supervisors <clears throat> to go over the budget. Remember, next year is a gubernatorial election and a primary, which requires the supervisors have three um, meetings to register people, like in June, before people, uh, they can't change their party affiliation after June. Okay. So, figured on the two <coughs> elections, about $1,500, I'll get it for you. We'll, we'll wait for you. We're going to be doing this for a number of weeks. Thank you, Harriet. Executive. It's the same as it's always been, unless we want to give ourselves a raise. Page one. Everybody good with that? About a raise for another year, Jeff? <laughs> good. Forestry Commission. 48. Any questions on that? No, I would just note that the Conservation Commission handles, or at least in conjunction with the Forestry Commission, and I think that's why their budget has been zeroed out to a dollar on each line. Okay. Heritage Commission, page 45. like Memorial Day it is exactly the let it be for now it appears although they haven't they didn't spend budget last year or the year before but. you're showing expenditures in 16 is 600 but uh, last year or currently this year we haven't haven't spent it all 250 which is probably dues or some. But the amount for 18 is 350. Yeah, that's kind of confusing. It's On the back next page, it says website maintenance. Column, column eight. That that's just the difference. That's the increase. It's the 600. It's, it's, it's comparing the actual to yep, the I gotcha. budget. That's all. Yep. I guess some comfortable leaving it at 600. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Do we have anything on advertising? Uh, that's Southern New Hampshire planning. Right. That's page 18. Okay, a dollar. Difference, and I assume that's just rounding. Yes. No increase? None. Well, the dollar. <laughs> we'll be okay. That's based on, on the board with any questions? For nope. Tonight's mission? Very good. That being done, we'll move on to review of the outstanding minutes. I'll make a motion to move the minutes of September 11th, 2017, as written. Second. Any corrections, Fred? No, I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We have an accounts payable manifest. Fifty-seven thousand five hundred seventy-seven and sixty-three cents. 
I'd move the manifest as read. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we have they're both combined in that amount. We have a payroll for two X employees, total of six thousand three hundred and ninety five dollars and forty six cents. I would make a motion to move that amount. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. I just note that this finishes up uh, Mr. Manzi and Evelyn. Correct. to do on this cemetery just sign the, the last page do we need a motion to sign that or do we already make the motion well we've already s we've already signed it once that's why I wanted I think you're okay to sign it it's just accepting on behalf of the town and this is a return as I recall it's a return of a cemetery lot to us Melissa Lakin yep so we've already the board's already signed it once and then sign as mm -hmm. We need a motion for that. Well, uh, we've already signed it. I would make a motion that we authorize the chair to sign the cemetery deed. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. I think it's double motions now. Week. Yeah, we'd ask for some clarification as to what happened to the bond. Okay. Should I read? Sure. Last week we discussed this and we asked for more detail with the abatement of who paid the timber tax levy, who paid the bond. It looks like the logger paid the bond, yet the check is being paid to the owners. Logger's email says pay land over landowner refund. The amount of the refund is six hundred sixty-seven dollars and ten cents. Okay. I would make a motion that we abate the six hundred sixty-seven dollars and ten cents. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. I just wanted to make sure they weren't getting the bond. And Correct. Did you sign in all the places? places? No. Oh, oh yeah. I guess but just I three places.
religious correspondence. said Fred yep okay we have a current use penalty for John and Janice DeFranzo five Woodcrest Drive of 7500 uh, I would make a motion that we collect our LUTC money in the amount of $7,500 second all in favor aye aye, aye. opposed We have two, we'll do them one at a time, petition and poll license. The first one is <coughs> Nottingham Road. Um, I would make a motion that we uh, grant the petition and poll license as requested. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? I assume that's been looked at by the road agent. A second one for one pole at 30 slash 85 located on Saddleback Mountain Road. Make a mo motion to sign. I would second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed?
Who's set to go, John? Mm -hmm. <coughs> Town Administrator's Report. <coughs> I have one item this evening. Uh, as a reminder to the community, uh, Friday, October 5th, Monday, October 10th, and Tuesday, October 11th, the town clerk will not be able to process any, process any motor vehicle registrations due to a software upgrade at the state level. It's, there is a sign out front, but I wanted to remind the community as well. Thank you. All set, John? Unfinished business. We have, after that, we have the policy from Chief Duquette that we had last week that we put off for a week for everybody to read so that we can make the decision tonight whether we want to accept it or not, and then it'll be available for the public to view. I would make a, and just so we can get conversation going, I would make a motion that we accept the policy. Second. All in favor? Did we, did we discuss it at all? Or? I think it's a good starting point. Yeah. Yeah. I think what we agreed last week was a good idea. Mm -hmm. Now it can be amended if someone wants to. Or right. Yes. Yeah, I, I think it, it's fairly boilerplate based on what other larger communities are doing in the state of New Hampshire. and. I know someone asked me during the week if this was protective of um, immigrants and their status, and I, I guess I termed it as not so much protective, but uh, more of blind to uh, mm -hmm. people's immigration status, um, and, and I think that's a good way to proceed. Right. Um, Everybody else all set? Yep. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Yes. So that will now be available for people that want to read it by requesting it from the town administrator, or should they go directly to the police department and request it from the department? They can contact me. I would say. Great. Thanks. Any new business from the board? <clears throat> yes, Andrew. Yeah, I note. Um, I had some citizens that had called me over the past couple of weeks about roadside mowing, and I noticed I talked to John about it and. Uh, some other folks, and I think we've begun roadside mowing in earnest at this point, which hopefully will make people happier. I know particularly people with small children were concerned that it hadn't been done because uh, sort of the five to eight-year-olds standing in the end of the driveway that were invisible because of the roadside growth on a number of roads were concerned. So Good. glad to see that happen. Thank you for following up on that. Danny, are you ready? Let me just uh, go ahead, Fred. Before Denny, <clears throat> I had picked up a couple of copies of the uh, uh, the traffic uh, layout for the intersection of uh, 107 and Church and Candia Road, and I dropped those off with John. I got those from uh, from Keach Nordstrom, and uh, I guess that's something we can look at uh, at a later time. But uh, they they were able to. Pull those out of their uh, out of their records and uh, Good. be able to pro provide <coughs> them for so us. We can all get a look at that before yeah. we discuss it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, Rick. Danny. Good evening. Uh, I am here as uh, chair of the Joint Loss Management Committee, and we have been working on completing a, a major update of the safety policy for the town. Can you? State who you are, sure. your name, so we have it on Denise record. Gregg, G R E I G. Thanks, Danny. Um, and um, so we have been working uh, over a period of months now to complete a, an, a major update of the safety policy, and um, it's we've we've reorganized it a little bit. Primarily, the core principles remain the same. Remain the same in terms of 
uh, the objectives and the responsibilities and the roles of the various folks within the town. Uh, probably the, the most significant change has been a reorganization of the actual safety rules. We've incorporated some very specific rules from the Department of Labor um, and upgraded some of the other policies with regard to toxic substances, bloodborne pathogens, um, and uh, again, reorganize some of the, the ways in which the policy was organized. The other uh, thing that we did was we've included a emergency procedures for town buildings, which we are basically annexes that focus on evacuation, lockdown, that kind of thing. So we'll be sitting down and, and organizing training sessions with respect to the various departments and different buildings, frankly. Um, it's not all about George B. White, it is about other buildings as well. So we'll be working with the various department heads. Um, but the core substance uh, remains the same, but we feel like it's we've made it a little more of a flexible document uh, going forward. So uh, we are looking for your approval with respect to the new safety. Andrew. Yeah, just um, as you move <coughs> forward with the scheduling of training, particularly for this building and apartments in this building, if you could uh, either John or you let us know, I think it would be good for at least one selectman to, Absolutely. to sit in on that. Absolutely, and part of that will uh, will be working with Primex in terms of some of that training, and some of that will be um, some of the other resources are available. So great, thank you. Fred, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I would make a motion that we accept and sign the updated. <laughs> 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 Chapter 1400, Administrative Rules for Safety no, and Health, but no, the safety... No, that's not it. That's the cover sheet. Just the safety policy statement. It should be safety There's, policy for the town of Deerfield. Uh, There's no cover page, so I will go with safety policy for the town of Deerfield. Okay. Is it in there? Hang on, it's annotated at the bottom. The Town of Deerfield Safety Policy. Is that appropriate, do you think? Yeah. yeah. So a second? Second. Second by Jeff. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Denny. Thank you. Very thorough. One last thing, I'd like to thank all of the committee members, Cindy McHugh, Deb Trenenthal, uh, Dan Diamond and Kelly Roberts, Mark Tibbetts, and John, of course, for all their help with getting this done. Thank you. Thanks, Danny. Any other business that the board has? Nope. We don't have a need for non-public, so citizens' comments. Mrs. Katie. In today's paper, I read the article, Deerfield Officials, I Land for New Public Safety Complex. And I was concerned because there was a statement made by um, the company we paid $2,000 for with their survey and the report they handed in about the hearing that we had. and. Um, I don't know how many of you were there, but there were several of us complaining about we couldn't hear things, that uh, there, even in committee, the breakouts that we had, we couldn't hear and we couldn't make ourselves clear. But um, I personally do not want to see a split of a police department built and then a fire department unless we have done a plan to build the two so that one would add it on to the other um, architecturally done in a way it can be easily done. But I, I just think we're putting a cart ahead of a horse when we have not 
had a committee that has looked at what other towns have for safety complexes, what they've done to um, put a fire department up or a police department up. And with the webs we have today for towns, you can go in and look at almost any town. Last year when I was in Vermont, I saw the one in Johnson, Vermont, which is a college town. And I thought, gee, that would be really great for Deerfield. And I told Mark about it, but I don't know if it went any further than that. So I really would like to see us looking at the websites of other towns and printing out a picture of what they have for safety complexes. And then tell us what would be best for Deerfield because population, or just look at towns with populations equal to Deerfield. And then another thing was, um, there was a statement made by Rebecca that not a single person at the meeting who thought we can do nothing. Well, that's kind of true, not nothing, but more planning in order to do it right the first time was a statement made by, I know, at least three people in my breakout group. So I really would like to see um, the selectmen look more closely at what can be done to make the best for Deerfield at the least cost to the taxpaying citizens. And as you know, we do have the 11 acres, but do we have acreage otherwise in town that might be better? That, that spot happens to be pretty central to the whole town. And it is right off a of main highway, so it looks like it might be good. But would it be good for Freezes Pond, which runs into the Lamprey River? And having served on the Lamprey River Regional Planning Commission, they are very concerned about any building with um, parking lots that would have wash of salt or cleaning fluids going into the river. So have we looked at the environmental of building it on that water body? Thank you. For the record, can you say which paper and the date? It was in the union leader today, and I'll leave this with you if you'd like. What, what was the title again, Mrs. Katie? I'm sorry? What was the title again? Deerfield Officials I Land for New Public Safety Complex. Thank you. Would you like it, John? I'll pick it up on the way. Thank you. Any other citizens' comments? Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All in favor? <coughs> right. Thank you, everybody. 620. Oh, we did have one next meeting. Be the 26th. 25th, yes. I mean, excuse me, 26th. It's not Monday, it's Tuesday. All right, thank you so much. First budget committee meeting is tomorrow night. What's Monday, the 25th? Uh, we have a thing that we're going Do to. So. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Perfect. You're the best. I appreciate it. Okay. So you'll change. Mm -hmm. yeah.